So I was trying to fall asleep, right? And I can't because all this stuff about palmistry that I don't even know where that information is coming from. It keeps going through my head. So I just got up so I could just do the reading and then maybe I'll get some sleep. <laughs> um, so first of all, the, the first thing that was like really kind of persistently nagging at me was the fact that telemetry, I did this, I just, I, I mean, the reading on telemetry the other day and in realizing the power that actually exists in hands, um, when you spell hand backwards, it spells DNA climb. It's like someone climbing your DNA. So when you look at palmistry or when you look at someone's, um, their hands, yes, you can um, divine, I suppose you could say. You can divine energy from them, but I think the more important aspect of those, um, the lines that you trace all along, up and down your hands, back and forth, all the lines on the palms of your hands, those are, those are genetic. And then once you're genetically given this set of information, we'll just say women will be the, you know, the ones holding the information and there's like men, that's the blue. And then there's just also experience. So I don't know if you've ever, um, heard the saying oh she's got soft hands or he's got or he has the hands of a hard worker or whatever the case may be um that's the experiential learning portion um I personally have a couple memories from when I was younger regarding palmistry um one from a babysitter and one from a family member um, the one from the babysitter was endearing. The one from the family member was traumatic. So I'm just going to say that um, there's something about the power of... So I don't know if you ever, yeah, seen that movie, something... I don't know if it's called something um, God made, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's with... Um, most deaf and he's working in an era where black people being doctors is not necessarily acceptable and while working in the position that he's working he ends up realizing that his skill set has exceeded and is much further along i suppose than he thought this is what i'm saying is there's something about like those two sets of dna working together to create that um it's like a this is the map that will lead you through your life tactilely so when you think about having tact versus being blunt um versus being rude versus being kind um there's some people that use their hands to communicate there that's why there's sign language right and having hard working hands or communicating with your hands or receiving information through your hands or um a lot of people talk with their hands like very exuberant movement with their hands while they're um expressing whatever i i want you to keep in mind that that dna climb Okay, because that's the part that needs to be addressed. This is the part that um, is kind of keeping me awake. Um, it doesn't take a lot of courage to raise your hand to somebody. Psh, slap somebody around a little bit, right? Obviously, that's pretty easy for some people. Um, what's difficult and what does take courage is to understand that when your bloodline is meant to be a defense mechanism or 
like we were talking about in earlier reads, the completion of this grounding um, can't really happen until you, you've um, accepted both sides, of, both parts of this Thunderbird track. It's like, I'm just seeing little kids coloring inside the lines or outside the lines. It's it's chasing the lines on your hand. It's it's knowing which direction to go, how to use your tactile touch um, in appropriate ways because appropriate ways seem to be really difficult for people. Like, I guess this is what's been bothering me about children being forced to, you know, give hugs and kisses to their parents' friends, for example. Um, I didn't really realize a lot of things until, until they happen. And um, that's one of them is, is, it's it's the simultaneous power and violence it's the surgery that we that our hands have the um skill set to refine and then perform it is the ability to this this energy is is, is what i'm saying it's the ability to like i'm just saying, i'm not seeing this anchor as being a bad thing with being ungrounded i'm seeing your hands as being active your hands are always with you. You're, that is a, a permanent map on your body that you can look down at at any point in time and have a, a sense of connection, not only to the, I guess, the genetic information that was necessary for that to be there, and as well as um, a reminder of your abilities, your strengths, your weaknesses, your hard work, um, your self-care. It's about, you know, taking care of yourself sometimes. Um, your hands just denote so many different things and it's just, this is the not ever being um, cuffed or never being, um, not being bound. You know, people bind people's wrists to <laughs> do things, you know. It, it's, that's what I'm saying is that there's a, a specific and I'm not trying to be um, negative with this, which is why I'm kind of being careful about my words. Spiritually speaking, um, your hands have an untold amount of power. And short of somebody literally cutting off your, your fingerprints um, or slicing into your, like causing scars or permanent damage, there's no way that that ever gets to change or is going to change all that much over the course of your life. Um, you will develop calluses. You will develop, um, you know, all the, your hands can tell such a story. Um, you will develop maybe spider veins. I have a few. Um, there's, you know, marks of where you've worn rings and taken them off. Um, you, it, it, your hands can just tell you so very much, right, about the disposition of your life. It's, it's, um, the energy of needing to realize how, um, so I'm, I'm going to put this in a very basic way because I don't know how else to make this less difficult to voice. Um, there are humans there are people out there who've never had use of their hands. There are people who have had hands and then lost them by means of an accident or by whatever, okay? And um, then there's people who have hands and then don't really use them for much outside of just like every day, like day-to-day -day kind of functioning. This um, realization is where we can change um, our abilities. Because if we're, if we're talking about telemetry, if we're talking about, um, I picked an onion from my garden earlier, so I'm just gonna use that. 
if we're looking at our roots, this is the DNA that's connected, rooted into obviously the things that we hold dear, near and dear to ourselves, right? Um, this this onion, this is the peeling of, of all the things. So I know for a fact, some people know how to play instruments. Some people know how to do um, puzzles. So other people know how to knit. Other people are really good at um, massages or other people are good at cooking. I'm, I'm telling you that the wide range of skill sets that we develop in this life a lot of them obviously have to do with your ability to work with your hands or manually is obviously the if you ever learn to drive a stick shift if there's ever a moment you need to work out rock climb um you know rock climb a uh, swim i don't know like you could you could name just about anything and your hands are involved so when we think about muscle memory muscle memory isn't just a mental thing your actual cellular structure in your body remembers your muscle memory. So your hands, the story of your life, I want to say, is literally not dead. Every experience you have, all the power in the world is right in front of you. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's hard for me to voice because... It's really important, I guess, um, I guess, I guess, I guess. I keep saying I guess. I'm not guessing anything, actually. I'm actually just stating that if you don't believe in the power of your own hands or your own ability, you'll never develop it. And that's something that I think is kind of sad because a lot of people, part of the frustration in society, obviously, if there are people out there who have these muscle memories from their hands, their arms, their shoulders, their elbows, you know what I mean? Like, there needs to be space for those people to have freedom to cross whatever um, space they need to. I don't think it's very prudent for me to say, oh, you shouldn't go to work and blah, blah, blah. However, I am saying the things that you contribute in your life with your hands, the, the work that you do, um, that's going to become a part of the muscle memory of your hands, even to the extent that you're typing on the computer. You may not remember what you typed when you were in Mavis be in class learning Mavis Beacon teaches typing or um you know uh, Mario teaches typing or whatever but I promise you that your hands remember just like if you work out on a regular basis your muscles have a memory that will kick in as soon as you begin Retriggering those uh... This is space to focus on your soulmate And I do want to say you've got two hands so if we're talking about yin and yang energy or if we're talking about um, the masculine the feminine um, There's a reason why you can put your hands together in so many different ways. If we're made in the image of a higher power, um, our higher power has some pretty extraordinary skills in that way.
creation is not just something that comes from the womb, although that is the seed of your DNA co contribution in the future, comes from obviously um, your mom and your dad. <laughs> However, you also can create with your hands, your mouth, your entire body can be a creation machine. Your feet, the sole of your feet. Your hand maybe has DNA from your mother. Let's just pretend for a moment, okay? And your father gives you the soles of your feet, right? Everything in between, um, from as high as you can reach to as much as you can dig your toes into whatever surface you're standing on, whether it be grass, sand, dirt, um, you can't dig into concrete that much, but you know, you could stand firm or on the asphalt. It doesn't, that's what I'm saying is that there's, mm -hmm. that's what was, this is what needed to come out. Oh my gosh. I actually, whoa, I'm pretty sure like if I watched this video, I just felt this huge wave of, um, I don't know if it's relief or absolute, like, I need to get some rest. But this is, that's the message that I needed to say. I just needed to say it. Um, we need to keep space for ourselves to, it's not just about the bubble, the, the personal bubble. It's about intentionally crafting that personal bubble to Come into line. Come online. It's like, oh, I'm seeing, um, you know, those, um, those joint commercials for like vape, Vicks Vapor Rub or whatever. They, they always have this like lit up portion of the body. So you could, oh, lower back pain, here it is. And it's like lighting that portion up, right? Although I understand that they would like to demonstrate to the public like this is where the pain is occurring. I think we need to be more intentional about the way we even envision that. Because when you're looking at a message, when you're um, reading palmistry, when you're divining anything, when you're using your discernment in life to figure out the areas you need to, you know, apply a little more pressure versus taking off a little more pressure. Um, that's where, this is how we, we refine those, um, t those, oh, oh, okay. So I'm hearing also with like learning violin or guitar, any string instrument, your fingertips get really, really sensitive. Um, they sometimes blister up. Um, they're just really like in the learning process, it's actually kind of uncomfortable. So that's what I'm saying. I'm all about comfort, obviously, but I'm also telling you that there's something about being comfortable with everything that you, every surface that you encounter. And obviously that's impossible, but I'm just trying to say this is the, I guess, the sensitivity level getting recalibrated. That's it. There we go. Whoa. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. Needing rest. But I do want to say I think this is like basically the whole kit and caboodle. This was my palmistry read for today or right now. I may try to reapproach this energy at some point, but I'm I'm not sure. So uh for now, like I said. I'm going to go stare at the back of my eyelids. 